Douglas Brinkley is a presidential historian and CBS News analyst. He joins us this morning live in the studio. Your thoughts after last night? Well, it was quite a night. Um, I stayed up till about 2.30 watching it all, and you just have to think that the impossible dream has come true. Uh, we love in this country Horatio Alger stories. Uh, in fact, Booker T. Washington's autobiography was up from slavery. In many ways, Barack Obama's comes up from the Jim Crow system in the United States to be president. Uh, we began the 20th century with Booker T. Washington uh, going to the White House just to eat. And he got lampooned, and, and T.R. got Teddy lampooned. Teddy Roosevelt invited him in, and the country went apoplectic. Uh, you should see the newspaper articles from the South and the things they said about Roosevelt for doing that. And now uh, the Obamas are in the White House. African-American children will be playing on the White House lawn. It's a very big moment. If slavery was the original American sin, this has become the redemption hour. Do we know how unlikely this is? We have become accustomed to his presence in our ho households and our newspapers for some 22 months now. Yeah. Had he not been there for these 22 months, this is something that has been part of our ongoing conversation for almost two years. If you were to start from scratch two years ago and look at this young junior senator from Illinois embarking on clearly an odyssey, yeah. how likely would it have been to this be the outcome? Of course, very unlikely. Even a year ago, everybody was saying Hillary Clinton had it, that it was not his time, that he was jumping the gun, that the Clintons were this power force in the Democratic Party. A year later here, the Clintons are minor characters in this drama. Uh, Barack Obama won because he, but whoever met him liked him. And I think you have to say Iowa worked not just for Obama, but I think our country's got to start embracing the Iowa caucus. They, they, every <laughs> year, Clinton sure learned a well, lot it's the that. caucus, the caucus, the caucus, and that's what Barack Obama did well. But he got in the living rooms in Davenport and, and Dubuque and all those towns, and people there liked him. They embraced him. And the thought that an African-American could win in a largely white state like Iowa is what jumpstarted all this. He always had a good base. Illinois has a lot of electoral votes. Mm -hmm. He knew he could win that. But the journey out of Iowa has been remarkable. And the way then... By the time of South Carolina, African Americans started pouring out in groves for him. I saw some stats like 97, 98 percent African Americans behind Barack Obama. I think that may be the larger point, because if you looked at that crowd in Chicago last night of over 150,000 people, it was all of America out there. It wasn't this part and that part and that part. It really was to use a Jesse Jackson phrase, a rainbow coalition? Rainbow and a youth coalition. I mean, we keep talking about race, but what a generational change. I'm in my 40s, Barack Obama's in his 40s. It's, it's the first guy we've had in the game like this. Suddenly, you're feeling if you're in your 40s now, wow, we have a new responsibility we haven't had before. It's, <laughs> it's scary and exciting. Doug, you gotta buck up, Pat. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I got, but, uh, I'm feeling that. Doug, Douglas Brinkley, thank you so much. For thank you.